Hi, this is Frank Cortese from FMT Consultants, uh, along with our SharePoint Practice Manager, uh, David Coons, and we are going to talk to you today about four steps to successful user adoption of your SharePoint uh, intranet. Thanks, Frank, for the intro on FMT. Uh, so as you guys know, uh, today we'll be talking about four steps, or what I like to call pillars, uh, of a successful user adoption uh, of your SharePoint intranet. Um, so the first would be SharePoint branding, which is the concept of adding themes, master pages, logos, uh, and special web parts to your site uh, so that it will match or enhance your company's brand. The second would be enterprise collaboration. Uh, the tools in SharePoint that allow multiple people to work on the same documents or on the same project simultaneously without getting into each other's way. Uh, then, of course, we have Microsoft Social, uh, which uh, will be a session on describing the reasons for using social features in an enterprise uh, and what they look like. And then the fourth would be mobile features. Uh, these are the new features that are in SharePoint, uh, as well as the customizations that we can do in order to view SharePoint from phones, uh, tablets, anywhere, anytime. The first pillar is SharePoint branding. Uh, with SharePoint branding, we can reinforce your company's brand either by um, taking existing colors and logos and schemes to apply to your SharePoint page uh, or creating new ones. If anyone remembers, there used to be a piece of software called Microsoft Front Page. Uh, what we have now in SharePoint is what's called SharePoint Designer, which is actually a successor of Front Page, with a, which allows you uh, to connect to SharePoint, uh, create master pages and layouts, um, and add these special web parts so that we get a custom look and feel to our SharePoint page. Uh, this branding concept has actually been around since the earliest version of SharePoint Services, uh, back when those SharePoint Services 3.0. Um, and it's now very common in the later 2010 and 2013 versions uh, to brand your SharePoint site. So on the left, you'll see a very ordinary, somewhat boring, non-branded SharePoint site. Um, and the idea is that uh, out of the box, SharePoint 2013 does have a sleek new user interface and look and feel. Uh, so we can push content out to our users, we can share and collaborate, uh, but I think it's important to drive more users to our intranet site. We want something that's a little bit more interactive, uh, more familiar to the user, and something that often has a homegrown look and feel. On the right, you'll see a SharePoint intranet that's built with master pages, layouts, and web parts to help organize and display content. Modern branded uh, SharePoint intranet sites often use uh, social web parts, which would be things like employee birthdays, employee anniversaries, new hires, and something like employee of the month. These help drive user adoption and keep content dynamic uh, and changing on a daily basis so that there's always something new to see in the intranet. The nice thing about SharePoint is that once we brand it, it's very easy to add pages with a matching look and feel uh, and add web parts to layouts so that with the click of a button, you can continue to add content and new pages that will fit into the existing brand feel. Uh, and these will continue to bring users back to your intranet site. <coughs> In overview, uh, the three key points of SharePoint branding would be to increase user adoption with a homegrown interface. Um, SharePoint's not just another office application. It's a completely customized environment for sharing information and documents that shouldn't just be owned by IT, but it should be owned by the users themselves that are adding content. Uh, we can easily add common looking pages and information. So not only does the interface enforce that a user owns their intranet content, but also that select content administrators in each, from, in each department can easily create pages with content and information, which will continue to match the overall branding uh, and the overall uh, feeling that we're giving to our users. 
The third would be that we're using social web parts to interact with the users. So again, we're not just pushing out information. This isn't just a website uh, for reading information, but we have social web parts that are constantly changing uh, based on our users um, that people with their organization will feel like they have some sort of connection uh, and they're not just another cog in the wheel. The second pillar that we're going to talk about today is enterprise collaboration. The idea behind sharing documents uh, and ideas company-wide able to collaborate on things without getting each other's way. So imagine the following scenario. If you have a team of consultants and a sales team within a consulting organization, uh, you often have to pass documents back and forth. So for example, uh, we may have a consulting team that produces a uh, estimate and a project plan for a project and then sends it over to the sales team to create a statement of work. Well, what happens is the sales team discusses with the client. They may add some discounts or make changes to the project and send it back to the consulting team. The consulting team then reviews the changes, makes a few of their own, and sends it back to sales. Now, at this time, we have four different copies of the project plan and the statement of work. And this can cause an issue, number one, because we're actually duplicating the information that's stored on the Exchange server and on our IT servers. But mostly, and most importantly, uh, we now no longer know who has the latest copy of the document. So if our sales team were to then send over a statement of work based on one of the project plans that wasn't the latest, um, we have a mismatching amount, and now the client would be confused, and that would be not only good for, the, for us, but for the client as well. Another common example of people using a, a file share for storing documents uh, you may end up easily with five different copies of a document, uh, you know, labeled underscore one, underscore two, uh, or with a date, uh, because you're creating different versions. Well, now you no longer know what the latest copy of that file is. So one of the things that we do in SharePoint um, is get rid of some of the pitfalls of using emails and file shares uh, by using version control, uh, document collaboration, and check-in, check-out features. So uh, one of the ways that we can drive users to SharePoint is by showing them the importance of how much more efficient it is to store and collaborate on documents using enterprise collaboration features as opposed to file shares and emails. So the first item that we have here is co-authoring of documents. So with Office web apps in SharePoint Online and SharePoint 2013 on-premise, we can have multiple users actually edit a document simultaneously if we allow it. For example, if we're creating a RFP, there might be uh, oftentimes an RFP that can be 15 or 20 pages long with multiple departments collaborating on it. So let's say we have the legal department filling out legal information, uh, and we have the um, finance department filling out financial information. Well, in SharePoint, with Office Web Apps, we can actually open up that document in multiple places at the same time, uh, and the finance department can fill out the finance section while the legal department fills out the legal section, and there are changes they're making to the document are constantly being saved. So this actually allows multiple people to work on a large document simultaneously without having to lock the document and get into each other's way. With uh, the new version of SharePoint, easy previews and sharing uh, is another way that we can drive user adoption in SharePoint and show how much easier it is to use that you know, file shares. Sending a link to a document is as easy as clicking the share button and typing in somebody's email address. Uh, then they, instead of getting an attached copy of the document, will actually get a link to the document, and now they get to take all the advantages of SharePoint, like version control, check-in, check-out, uh, et cetera. We can also view previews of the document using Office web apps, web apps without having to completely open up the document and view it in uh, the client's application itself. 
With document versioning and check-in, check-out, uh, again, we no longer have multiple copies of a document. So every time you look at a document, it's the latest version, uh, since we're using links now instead of email attachments. Uh, of course, we can view the version history and bring back an older version as long as we have the permissions. And we can then see who has made edits to the document uh, in length. But when you send a link, again, it's, it's always the most current version. So the three results and key points uh, of using these enterprise collaboration features would be to decrease the number of size and email sets. So no longer do we stress out our IT team by filling up 10 times the server storage space on our Exchange server with copies of attachments being sent back and forth. And no longer do we have to maintain multiple copies of a single document just because of a small change from one version to another. Uh, we're removing confusing and unstructured, unstructured file shares by providing a single location in SharePoint with security, versioning, and document retention without uh, any longer having to sift through five levels of nested folders in a file share to find a document. Now things are quickly and easily available via SharePoint search uh, by tagging the documents uh, and then searching and refining for them. And then, of course, based on my story at the beginning, uh, we no longer need to worry about who has the latest copy of a document. The current version of a, of a document in SharePoint is always the latest version. So users given permission to view older copies of the document can see them, but this, this is all uh, controllable through governance and security in SharePoint. So for the most part, your end users will always be seeing the latest version of a document when they uh, go to that link or click on that document in SharePoint. So with that being said, after covering the first two pillars, uh, I'd like to jump into a brief demonstration in SharePoint uh, where I'll show some of the uh, branding features that we covered and, of course, some of the uh, enterprise collaboration features. So bear with me just a moment while I bring up uh, SharePoint. So the first item that I wanted to show was a standard SharePoint site. Uh, this is one of our SharePoint demo sites. And this is, uh, as shown in the slides, what a non-branded SharePoint site, site looks like. So we can still have uh, documents with the standard SharePoint user interface. Um, we can have text and content editor web parts. We can push information out to our users via news feed. Uh, via announcements and discussion boards, but everything has the SharePoint 2013 user interface. Now there are some basic features that we can switch around the colors of the ribbon, um, text colors and fonts, uh, but that's about the extent that you can brand uh, SharePoint out of the box. Now I'm going to show you a branded SharePoint site And what you'll see here is we've branded a SharePoint site with a, a fake company name, which is Microsoft's fake company name called Contoso. Um, and you'll see that it looks much different than the SharePoint 2013 out of the box UI. So the first thing that you'll notice is we have a logo here um, with a different uh, navigation. So you can see at the top navigation, we have some drop downs uh, that will allow users to navigate across the site. And now uh, the announcements, rather than just being a simple list uh, of text, is a banner, a carousel banner that has uh, images. You can see we have tools for analysis, training revisited, uh, and if you click on each one of these individually, uh, you can get more information as well as conveying a photo to your users. Uh, so these would be things where company-wide you might have, um, you know, press releases or need to say that you have, you know, network maintenance or the phones are going down. Uh, this is where you would put those most important announcements. This is 
this is often, um, uh, you know, a branded internet site is often where a company will set this as the uh, first thing that pops up when an employee opens their Internet Explorer. It's where the most important company information is coming from. You see down the page a little bit, we have some of the social web parts that I was referring to in the slides. So here we've got a message from the president, uh, or oftentimes a company will have something like a CEO corner where the CEO, CFO can post, uh, you know, where they're going, uh, you know, we're going across the world to, you know, talk about making an acquisition, that sort of thing. Um, message from HR, so this is where they can post, you know, open enrollment and soon. Be sure to, uh, you know, fill in your benefits information. And then, of course, the more personalized employee items, such as employee of the month or employee birthday. So we're really trying to make uh, those connections with other people in the organization on a personal level as well as uh, a prof professional level. You also see if I mouse over one of these items that's showing a user, it's going to pop open um, a little tool that will allow you to instant message or make a phone call, a video chat, or send an email to this user. All of these social web parts uh, in SharePoint, we can integrate with Active Directory um, at your company, you know, via your company's uh, AD, and we can pull in usernames, we can pull in um, email addresses and phone numbers so that you can directly contact these people and maybe shoot them an email and say, you know, congratulations on being employee of the month. Down the page a little bit more, we have uh, chosen to put some videos. So these might be more press release related things for the Contoso company. Um, and you can simply click on these and play a video which will take you to another page. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and I, I think we see a couple of questions coming in right now. I'd like to um, go ahead and keep asking your questions but to hold, uh, hold the questions until the end. So we'll do a couple more slides and another demo, uh, and then we'll answer everyone's questions at the end. So you can see now at the bottom of the page, uh, we have what's called audience targeted material. So these web parts are actually targeted towards the users that are logged in. So you can see that um, in the upper right here, I'm logged in as Garth Fort. And you'll notice that the web part on the lower left here shows my sales metrics. So we can have um, different items on the page, in the branded page, that are specific either to the user that's logged in or to the role of the user that's logged in. So for example, Garth Fort, Garth Fort is in sales and marketing. So when he logs in, he sees the sales metrics. But when the, when the CEO or the CFO logs in, they might see, instead of an image carousel at the top, they might see you know, financials for the entire company. So we can make the experience uh, of the front end of SharePoint really specific to, uh, to the user or the type of user that's logging in. Uh, and this, again, really just gives users of the intranet uh, a feel that it's something customized, uh, something that they can use each day to you know, assist in a job, and it's not just something that is another web page. Uh, so, the next thing I'd like to show are a few of the enterprise collaboration features that we discussed. So I'm going to navigate on over to the sales and marketing site of Contoso. And you'll notice that the branding is slightly different uh, for each department here. So the page will look a little bit different when I get to the sales and marketing page. So for sales and marketing, this department has chosen to show um, the latest presentation here in a PowerPoint slide, uh, as well as some key, per key performance indicators um, on the right about budget uh, and sales uh, analysis. Then, of course, they're also showing things like sales and marketing announcements, which you can see again is now just a simple list. It's not completely branded. Uh, and then the top rated documents based on uh, ratings. 
So what I, what I wanted to show here is first uh, the easy document preview that comes along uh, with Office Web Apps. So as opposed to having to go open each one of these documents individually, I can actually just click on the ellipsis menu next to them and get a preview of the document and even scroll through this preview of the document and view it before even opening this up on my computer. Uh, so the advantage here is when we're collaborating on documents, we no longer have to click through uh, to see every document. We can see a simple preview before even opening that document. What you also notice here is the share button that I had discussed. So if I click share on this document, uh, instead of what the current process often is for, people, for companies that don't have SharePoint, if I wanted to send a document to Frank, I would open up an email, I'd drag and drop a document from my desktop into the email as an attachment, and then I'd type in, please find the attached 2012 pricing guidelines, and I'd send it to Frank. As discussed, that would now create two copies of the document, and then if we sent it back and forth, that would create multiple copies. What we have now is I simply click the share button here, and I type in Frank's name, which it would pull from Active Directory, and then I'd say, Frank can either edit the document or only view the document, and I would click share. This would send a simple link to Frank that said, David is sharing a document with you, and he would click on that link, which would take him directly here to this document for him to work on and collaborate on the same document as opposed to having a second copy. So what Frank would do is then simply click on this document, and it would open up in Word Web App. So now we have a couple options here. We can either use the, um, the minimal interface of Word Online, so I can actually edit this document in Word Online and make changes directly in the browser, which is nice because that will work in any browser on any device or I can choose to edit the document and edit it in the full version of Word. So that will bring up the client application that's on my computer, and then of course I can use Word as I know it love it today. So what I'd like to show is, after the Word document comes up, uh, I'm going to make a quick change to it, uh, and then I'll show you how document version is. I'm going to go ahead and edit it in Word Online because I was having an issue with my office application popping up. So here's the other advantage uh, that you'll see here is if you have a computer that does not have Word, uh, Excel, PowerPoint installed, you can still actually edit those just in your browser. So you saw a perfect example. My Word, for some reason, wasn't opening correctly. Uh, now I can edit this in Word Online. So if I say index for Contoso sales and marketing, um, let's say that we don't like marketing, so we're just going to say that the sales team did this. And it's having an issue editing here as well. So if I had permission to edit this document, I would make a change to it. And then you can see when I go back to the sales and marketing site. You can now view the version history of the document. So if I go to the ellipsis menu and I go to version history, you can see all of the changes that have been made previously to this document. So as mentioned before, we're no longer creating a new copy of the document every time we make a change to it. The important thing here is that we're saving the differences between each version of the document. So you can see who made the change, you can see when they made the change, and if you have permission, you can always go back and restore one of these versions or view one of these versions as well. So it's really that single source of truth for a single document uh, to be able to always send a link uh, and not have to worry about who has the latest copy of the document or not. All right, I am going to jump back into the slide deck 
and let's talk about enterprise social and mobile features of SharePoint. So enterprise social is the buzzword today uh, among a lot of Microsoft's products. So they've been integrating social with CRM, with SharePoint. Uh, they even made the Yammer acquisition. Uh, but what does it really mean? What does enterprise social really mean? So I wanted to outline strictly that social features are only a minor part of what makes SharePoint an enterprise, enterprise social, social collaboration platform. We've already talked about some of the collaboration features. But what is the first application that people think of when they hear of the word social? It's often Facebook or Twitter, uh, maybe LinkedIn. So the word social can often carry a negative connotation when related to business use. Uh, when we talk to our clients and customers about SharePoint, some will often shy away when we breach the subject. So why would I want social features within my organization? Why would I want to integrate enterprise social features with document management and portal system. Uh, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. As the methods in which we communicate on a personal level have evolved over the past 20 years or so, uh, so is the communication technology that we use in the enterprise. So on a personal level, uh, we started with phone, we got email, uh, and then we moved toward instant messages like Skype, or Google Chat, or even AOL Instant Messenger. Then we advanced to digital voice and video chatting uh, with our friends and family. And then, of course, eventually to social networking via Facebook and Twitter, which we have today. So in the workplace, the evolution has been similar. Uh, more than ever, companies are relying on employees that are in satellite offices or remote offices to keep the business running around the clock. Uh, we can't really do that with phone, uh, nor can we do it with email. So enterprise social features allow for this ongoing communication and collaboration in real time. So no more waiting for a phone call uh, or trying to sift through a large email chain for the latest information. Um, with video conferencing and social networking, we now have uh, immediate access to information across the company. So you will probably know that we've moved from IM tools, uh, such as Communicator, which is now Link, uh, in video conferencing, of course, virtual boardrooms. Uh, and now, today, enterprise social networking is changing the way that we communicate. So there are three primary reasons that social networking in the workplace is leading to a higher productivity, less turnover among your organization, and an overall increase in success. The first is really employee engagement. Uh, so when employees are engaged via social media, they fear, feel a greater sense of connection to the organization. Um, as I mentioned before, they no longer feel like they're just a cog in the wheel, but their ideas for the betterment of the organization can be heard and might even come to fruition uh, through making posts in the enterprise social space. Uh, the second would be team collaboration uh, and really less time spent on searching for information. So. Team collaboration is, is driving innovative companies, and in order to be in, innovative, companies need to move quickly to compete. So if your employees can connect, learn from each other, uh, especially across the country and across the world uh, with you know, increases in remote uh, business these days, uh, the social collaboration features in SharePoint enable your teams to quickly share knowledge, find other people, and communicate with each other. So it makes finding the right answer or finding the person with the right answer in the end uh, take a lot less time. The third point is uh, open conversations and personal connections. So having a connected organization is, is really the key differentiator uh, when using social features. It takes that traditional intranet that pushes out information, uh, static information that may change on a weekly basis, and it turns uh, the content deployment uh, into the employee's hands. So content and communications are user-driven. Content is actually created from the bottom up through interact interactive dialogue as opposed to being uh, pushed from the top down. 
So this not only encourages open communication and conversation, but again, just as the web parts, it helps create personal connections in the organization as well. So our shift toward social networking is a change in how we're communicating. Uh, the shift towards mobile devices shows a change in where and when we're communicating. So the final, final item I'd like to cover that helps bring users to your SharePoint intranet and create a successful implementation of the mobile features that are in SharePoint. Uh, they kind of bring all of the collaboration and social aspects of SharePoint together, but allow for the fast-paced business users that we have today uh, to be able to do that communication and collaboration on the go. So the way that we're used to working uh, is all work being done on a desktop computer, stuck in a cubicle um, in our office, and that's the way in the past. So businesses uh, keep moving faster and faster and growing quicker than ever before, and we need for the technology to keep up. So users from the executive level trickling all the way down are quickly moving towards using email on their tablets and phones, uh, being able to respond quickly and easily. And if you want to drive user adoption to your internet portal, then SharePoint must also be available in the same way. So there are two different different uh, main aspects of a mobile SharePoint intranet. The first is open accessibility, and the second is mobile views and responsive branding. So SharePoint Online is automatically accessible over the internet without a VPN connection, but SharePoint on-premise can also be configured in the same way. Uh, if we allow people to access SharePoint through their Active Directory credentials, but without requiring a VPN, it allows multiple devices ranging from laptops and tablets and phones to be able to connect without any custom VPN software or setup. So this really takes um, one of the annoying steps away from connecting to your company's network or intranet uh, away, if you will. So that second point is that mobile views and responsive branding uh, are needed to keep your intranet uh, mobile friendly. So out of the box, SharePoint 2013 does have two new mobile views, which allow content to be worked on through a smaller screen size. To really get that uh, custom look and feel and SharePoint branded intranet on a mobile device, responsive branding will automatically adjust based on your screen size, and it'll show co uh, content that's cascaded horizontally, vertically on a smaller screen. So other features also, just uh, such as Office Web Apps, will allow you to edit content directly on your mobile device, as we saw earlier, uh, which means not only can you edit Word, Excel, PowerPoint documents on your desktop, but now you can do it even on iOS uh, applications or devices that only have a web browser. So the three key points of a mobile SharePoint intranet would be the ability to access the internet content anywhere um, for frequent travelers, remote users, and satellite offices. Uh, in order to get them into using the internet, we really have to have that available anywhere. Uh, the ability to use any device to open and edit documents, um, even in iOS, is important uh, so that you know we can have our users collaborating regardless of if they're sitting in front of their computer or not. And then, of course, out-of-the-box views or responsive branding allows us to view, view SharePoint in a special way on a different device and always have the best user experience. So with that, uh, I would like to jump into another brief demo uh, to show some of the SharePoint social features uh, and responsive branding and then open it up for a Q&A session uh, for any, any questions you guys have about anything we've covered or about uh, SharePoint user adoption in general.
So you'll see that we're back at our Contoso site, uh, and I wanted to show uh, some of the social and mobile features that are built into this SharePoint intranet. So first what I'd like to do is go to the search center and search for marketing. So the first thing you'll notice is that if I search for marketing, the scope of my search is everything that's in SharePoint. So you'll see that what's returned uh, are news articles about marketing, uh, and you can see the nice search preview here uh, that shows how many people have viewed the article uh, as I go from uh, search item to search item. But you'll notice on the left our refinement types are SharePoint site, PDF, Excel, Word, uh, and then author who's created the document. So what we want to do to use some of the social features of SharePoint uh, are to, is to click the people section here. So if I click on people in the search center, what we're actually doing is searching the people of our organization for the word marketing. You'll notice that the refiners on the left have changed, so now the refiners are which department the person is, which job title they have, and what the responsibilities are. And you can see that search results are now um, employees of the company. So Garth, uh, myself, showed up as the marketing manager. You can see that now the preview shows skills, projects, interests, uh, what school I went to, um, and of course, all of this is configurable to what type of information you would want to share. Um, and then we can, of course, search by a person's name as well. So if I was, for example, um, getting a phone call from somebody at the company, uh, wanted to figure out what they did, uh, or if I was looking to call somebody at the company and search by name, I could use the people search features of SharePoint as an employee directory. So let's say I was looking at Zrinka, uh, and it turns out she is the VP of Sales and Marketing. So I can go ahead and click on her user information here, and this will take me directly to Zrinka's personal site. So in SharePoint, uh, we each have a site that's called our My Site, which has our um, employment information, such as what office we belong to, uh, what our work phone number is, what our email address is, so it's an easy way for people to find others that work in the organization um, without much effort. It will also show uh, the ability to send an email or chat with each user on link. Um, and let me show up here, sorry. Alright, so now we're on Zrinka's personal site. So you can see I have the ability to click and easily send an email, uh, or I have the ability to send an instant message via Link or Microsoft Communicator. Um, I've got the phone number, uh, the email information, and then if the user chooses to, they can put some uh, personal uh, information about themselves, projects that they've done, and what their skills are. Now this information is useful because of the search that I just showed. So if you have a large information uh, organization, and say you had somebody that needed help on SharePoint, you could simply switch to the people search and search for SharePoint, and David Coons would come up because he's the SharePoint practice manager. But not only that, if you had other power users that had SharePoint in their skills, they would show up as well because maybe you don't want to call the manager of SharePoint, but you want to get to know uh, a coworker that's, that's on your level, uh, and you can discuss SharePoint with them. So there's that extra information and that social connection that you're making with other users. You can see that documents that we've both edited or worked on, we have in common here, so it'll also show uh, documents and their previews uh, that we've worked on together. And then, of course, uh, news feed and discussion features for each user. So you can see that uh, Zrinka's requested that her coworkers proof this document uh, for Southern Partnership. So I can go ahead and click here. I can preview this document, um, take a quick look at it. I think that it looks great, but I think that uh, Yukari's name is misspelled. So I can let her know if I reply here. And 
And I can let Drinka know that uh, I think that her document is great, but there may be a misspell. Uh, so this is really a quick and easy way to collaborate on things because maybe she doesn't want to send an email blast out to you know five people to proofread the document, but she can post it uh, on their news feed so that the first person that responds will at least give her some sort of feedback. So now what I wanted to show uh, is the responsive design capabilities. So if I jump back to our Contoso site, So you'll notice right now that on our home page uh, we have, of course, announcements and social features that we were looking at before. However, you can see that things are cascaded here horizontally as well as vertically. So we have this horizontal area here, we've got three horizontal boxes here, um, and then again, horizontal information here. Now, if we were to look at this on a iPad or an iPhone, uh, we might have less screen real estate. So we probably wouldn't want to see all of this information spread across the screen. So what we can do with SharePoint is we can do responsive branding. So you'll notice here as I squish the screen down to a smaller screen size, what it will do is it will actually now change the way that this uh, announcements carousel works. So now I can actually flip through with arrows to get to the other items since they don't spread all the way across the page. It actually took my menu and no longer is it spread all the way across the top of the page, but now it's a nice little drop down menu uh, that will allow me to go to different sections. Oops, I accidentally clicked on one. And then um, we still have these, you know, next to each other, but if we were to go even a level further uh, and say we were on maybe an iPhone and switch the screen down even further, you'll notice that it's again responsive and now we have our message from the president, our message from HR, and our employee of the month cascaded vertically. Uh, we have our videos going you know, with a scroll bar again. The sales metrics, the events, and documents are now also cascaded vertically. So what we're doing is our design is actually responding to the type of device that it's on. So as opposed to having three separate designs, which some companies will do, one for uh, mobile, one for tablet, and one for laptop or desktop, what we're doing is we're just creating a single design that is actually responsive to uh, the type of device that you're looking at it on. Uh, so that gives you flexibility and allows you to show all of your content and information but be able to see it from multiple devices again so we can get that, that mobility uh, and we can drive users to come use our intranet even if they're uh, the type of employee that's often traveling or, or on the go. And of course, if I expand it back out, you'll see that it all dynamically will reset to uh, the full screen button. So with that being said, um, I'd like to open it up for uh, some questions, uh, and I think uh, Frank will be reading some of the questions that we've had. Uh, I think you can uh, raise your hand or go ahead and just type your question directly into the question area, uh, and we'll be fielding those questions right now. Well, one question, David, that we have is uh, if you could talk a little bit more about workflows. Um, so about workflows specifically, so in SharePoint you can attach workflows to uh, a lot of different things. You can attach workflows to a site, you can attach, attach workflows to a list of items, or you can attach workflows to a document. Uh, did you have a specific question about workflows or was it just something uh, in general? Um, the question was just uh, general on workflows. Uh, the person that asked that, if there's something more specific, uh, if you could just uh, type and we'll try to get to that, uh, that question. Okay. Can we go on to the next? Yeah, another question uh, came up, uh, if you could talk about the metadata tagging. Um, is that something that's done automatically? How does that work? Okay. So yeah, what, what companies will often do is, because of the fact that 
SharePoint works a little bit differently. So instead of uh, having a file server where we've got um, nested document structures where there's folder after folder uh, of separation of documents, we'll use metadata to separate those documents out. So instead of creating a, a, a folder with a subfolder with another subfolder under that, uh, we use metadata to differentiate between the documents. And what that would uh, allow us to do is tag the documents as they're uploaded. So now when we search, as you saw in the people search, for example, um, you could refine by department or by position. So if you were searching for documents, you would be able to refine by those metadata columns. Uh, and that just gives you power uh, when, you're, when you're searching for documents. I uh, see Le Layla has raised her hand. Did Layla ask a question? Uh, we did get another question on the workflows. If you could show something on the screen. I don't know if we can uh, show an example of a workflow. Ah, for workflows. Um, so I think we don't have anything prepared in this webinar for showing workflows, uh, but if you wanted to reach out to FMT, uh, to Frank here, you can definitely set up um, a one-on-one -on -one demonstration of uh, what SharePoint workflows look like. Uh, but we don't have that prepared in, in today's uh, webinar. Okay, it looks like one, one more question about uh, security and control, uh, you know, with different uh, uh, team sites, uh, how does the security work? Can that be controlled from, from, a, from a top level? Yeah, definitely. Great question. So uh, what you'll, one of the things that you notice uh, as I navigated across the internet was that we have different departments here. So what we often want to do is secure uh, doc documents, especially in information like some of the KPIs that we were looking at, by which department or which role of uh, user should be able to access that. So in SharePoint, we use groups to control the security. And we can actually attach Active Directory groups that are already existing to SharePoint groups. Uh, and what that will enable, enable us to do is continue to manage our security in Active Directory by your IT team. Uh, but that will immediately be reflected in SharePoint. So I could use the engineering AD group uh, to secure things in SharePoint uh, by the engineering, uh, finance and legal likewise. Um, what that will do is it will not only hide the content so that users won't see it, but even if they knew the URL to type it in, it will lock that down uh, so that they won't be able to get to it. All right. Looks like there's a uh no more questions uh, right at the moment, but uh, um, we want to thank all of you for joining us for this webinar uh, today. And uh, also, uh, if there are more questions you might have after we uh, sign off here, please feel free to reach out to uh, me personally. My name is Frank Cortese, or just reach out through our website, and uh, our marketing manager will uh, kind of forward those, uh, those questions and responses, and uh, we'll be sure to reach back out to you folks and uh, try to answer those questions and uh, go over what, uh, uh, what other items regarding SharePoint or anything else that uh, uh, we've discussed today. So uh, again, I want to thank you on behalf of FMT Consultants for uh, uh, coming to the webinar today. I uh, wish you a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you, guys.